I've been thinking a lot about what the markers are of, of God's people gathered together. And I was drawn to Exodus chapter 33. Um, and the story is, it, it talks about how the people um, uh, started worshiping a golden calf when Moses was up on Mount Sinai. And, um, and writing, you know, God was writing the Ten Commandments, and he comes down with these Ten Commandments, you know, God's handwriting, you know. I mean, like, here's God's word. And the people are worshiping a calf that they made, a golden calf, right? And Moses is so frustrated, he throws down the tablets and they break. And uh, fast forward, he's going to end up having to write those, those commandments himself the, the second time. But, but we pick up the story in Exodus 33, verse 11, where God and Moses is having a conversation with God about all of this. He's like, and, and he gets, and I love what, I love this passage because Moses gets right to it. Like, what's the purpose of your people coming together? And in, in verse 12, Moses says to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people. And as you can kind of hear the frustration. Like, God, you, you told me to lead these people, but... I don't think they want to be led. I don't. Th I think they want to do their own thing, and so he's kind of frustrated, and he's like, and he's crying out to God. And in verse thirteen, if I found favor in your sight, God, show me your ways, that I may know you. This is probably a, a word for all of us, but I know specifically it's a word for pastors and leaders, that in the midst of frustrating times that we live in and people kind of doing their own thing and not really following your leadership, sometimes you just at the end of the day, like, do you come back to this? When things aren't going well in your life, when things, when there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty, do you pray this prayer? God, show me your ways that I may know you. Because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. It's not whether people are following us or doing what we ask or, or whether, whether uh, the world is, is, is exactly the way we want it to be. At the end of the day, what really matters is that, God, I want to know you. I want to know what you're like. I want to know what your presence is like. I want to know what your ways are like. And, and so God says, Moses, uh, verse 14, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Oh man, I could spend the next half hour talking just about that scripture that in God's presence is rest. Instead of striving and trying to make things happen, trying to do things in our own strength, that when we just sit in God's presence, um, there's rest there. And then, and then it goes on, and in verse uh, 16, Moses recognizes that, God, is it not in your going with us that makes us distinct? Um, I and your people from every other people on the face of the earth. I think about the church today, and I think there's a lot of things that make us distinct from other people on the, on the planet, but is it God's presence? Is it God's way? Or is it some political agenda? Or is it some worldview? Or is it some way that we interpret scripture? And, and I, my cry and my prayer for the church, for the people of God, would be that, that what makes us distinct is God his presence with us. And so the Lord says to Moses in verse 17, this very thing that you've spoken, I will do. I will go with you is what he's saying. I will, I will make my presence among you very real. And, and so Moses says, please, God, show me your glory, the weightiness of your presence, the, the, the fullness of who you are. God, show me that. And so this is God's response to that prayer. I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim before you my name. Isn't it interesting that God answers the prayer of, of Moses that show me your glory, God's response is his goodness. Sometimes we think that God's glory is found in all the power and, and his might and all this stuff, right? Like, like he's bigger than every other God, you know? And the reality is, is that what, how God defines his presence is different than sometimes how we define his presence that he defines his presence not by how big he is or how much in control he is, and he's really big and he's really in control, he could go there, but instead he says, I want you to see my goodness. If you really want to know me, if you really want your people, the church, to be marked by my presence, then you need to know my goodness. And so today I wanna to encourage you to um, pray these same prayers that Moses prayed. God, show me your glory. And then look for his goodness in your life and in the life of the church that you're a part of.